Well, hello, educator friends, and welcome back. We are here with episode 10 of the School Life series. Last week, we talked about middle school, so middle level education with a tremendous seventh grade teacher from North Carolina. I just really appreciated the conversation with David James. So if you have not listened to it, do it now after you listen here with Nikki and I, but uh, go and listen to it this week. So today we have a super special guest with us. So if you have not picked up on this yet, I like to have really great educators on as guests who are even better humans. And today is the epitome of that. So anybody that knows Nikki will attest, she is just one of the kindest, hardest working, selfless humans you will ever meet. Thank you. The past year or so, you know, I've been lucky enough to call Nikki a friend uh, and just have her in my circle. And I really appreciate that. So besides being one of the nicest people you'll ever meet, uh, Nikki is also an elementary dean in Virginia. So Nikki, thank you for taking the time to talk today. You're going to share your educational journey and, and some of your passions with everyone. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor. Um, I appreciate you saying I'm so kind. I feel the same way about you. If you guys have not met Ross's wife as well, they are just the best people ever. So I appreciate you guys. Um, so my name is Nikki or Nicolette, as I like to say, my professional name. And I am a dean in Virginia. I have been in the education system for 10 years, which is crazy. I can't yeah. believe it's been 10 years. Nice. And I have been in the administration role for the past three years. So I'm still learning and growing every day, but I'm really enjoying the ride. Awesome. I love that. And um, like 20 seconds, I, if I would say share like who you are personally, what would yeah. you say about yourself? Something that we would never guess or however you want to describe yourself. Well, I would say first and foremost, I am a dog mom. I have a little um, Shishan. His name is Milo and he is my heart. I'm obsessed with him. So first and foremost, I am a dog mom. I am also a huge women's national soccer team fan. And I am also very into brunch lately. And lastly, I would say I am really into reading. So I am a big okay. reader. I have a goal to read two to three books a month this year in 2024. So cross her cool. fingers. You need to connect to Kinsey because she is like, she's an, I don't know how many she read in January, but it was above her goal. And she's just like totally into reading right now. So you guys need to need to connect, talk books. Um, oh. And speaking of brunch, so I was in DC in what, November? And yeah. Nick took us to the this coolest little brunch spot. What was that place called? It was called Ted's Bulletin. Ted's Bulletin in yeah. the, in Virginia, uh, and they had homemade pop tarts, which was homemade pop tarts and cinnamon rolls that were bigger than Ross's and mine. They're huge. They are massive and equally as tasty. So <laughs> that was fun. Uh, Nikki, let's talk about your journey as an educator. So, like, was there any moment in your life you said, "I want to be a teacher," or just you know, why did you go into education? That's a great question. So I feel like it's kind of twofold for me. So I was always the kid that used to play school growing up. Um, mm -hmm. My mom bought me a desk when I was little and I would pretend to grade papers and all of my friends would come over and they would be my students in my class. So that was definitely a huge part of my life growing up. Um, the second part of that is also I had a really crazy elementary school experience. I had some really high highs, but I also had some really low lows. Mm -hmm. So when I was in second grade, my dad actually passed away. And the teachers that I had in first, second, and third grade were so important to me in how they not only loved me through all of it, but they knew who I was yeah. and just how they supported not myself, but my family and the person who I am today. Yeah. So I really can't ever thank them enough for what they did for me. I actually keep in touch with all of them um, through okay. Facebook and social media. So I really give it not only to me having that drive as a child, but also those really important players in my life in elementary school. Yeah, no, I love that. That gives me chills um, just hearing that story. And I think that's so true for a lot of people. Like when we ask teachers and educators that question, there's all these examples, just like you shared, you know, this teacher, this moment, this year, they did this for me and I'll never forget it. 
A lot of yeah. teachers still stay in contact with former teachers. I know I do. I got I got a text message the other day from my favorite teacher ever, second grade teacher. Um, and it just made my day, you know, made my whole week getting that text that she thought of me vacationing and, you know, what she knew was my favorite spot to vacation at. Um, it was just neat. But I think if we ask that same question to people outside of the education, they're going to be able to tell you the same thing. Right. And so we just never Absolutely. really can put a value on that. Like, yes, I'm teaching you reading and writing and, and math, but the value of being there in the moments where you need teachers most, right? We talk about that when I was a principal, like these kids are spending more time with you in a week than they are their parents. Yeah. You are filling that role. And a lot of times when they go through certain situations, sometimes it's hard to talk to a parent or a loved one, you know, in a, but they can open up and talk to, to their teachers. So uh, I love, love that. And just hearing those moments, it always makes me proud to be in edu education and be an educator. So Absolutely. Um, when did you start teaching or where did you start teaching at? So I started teaching in Loudoun County, which is in Virginia. We're like right outside the DC area. So it's actually kind of weird in Virginia, you cannot major in education. So all of the programs that you do, they are five year master programs. So after yeah. I graduated, I stayed for a fifth year and it's really intense and you do a whole half of a year student teaching in two different sections. So okay. after that, I um, came in and I taught third grade and I always tell people, I always thought I was going to be a kindergarten or a first grade teacher. <laughs> that was my heart. I love those little guys. Um, but I had a third grade teacher during my student teaching who was like, you're really gonna like it, I promise, I promise, just give it a chance. And I did, I loved it. Mm -hmm. So when I had the opportunity to get a third grade position, I was like, here we go. <laughs> yeah, I love third grade, third and fourth grade. You know, you're not teaching them how to read anymore. Um, yep. They're there, you can just take off. Their personalities are still respectful. They still are little sponges, um, but you can have some conversations with them, a little deeper, deeper level conversations. So yeah. that's cool. And now you are uh, a dean, like we shared in your intro. So what led you into administration? I know why you're a great leader, but share with us what, what led you into administration. So I was teaching and I was in the classroom for about five years and I was kind of at this point where I was loving the effect that I was having in my classroom on my 25 to 28 students. Mm -hmm. But I also saw the bigger picture at my school and how I could make that impact greater than just inside my four walls in my classroom. Yeah. Um, I also found myself in a lot of leadership roles without even realizing um, I was team leader. I was getting called to go to presentations that are, you know, at our county level and mm -hmm. I was like, maybe I can do this. And my principal at the time really pushed me. She's like, you, you can, like, this is your calling. So I did another graduate level program. And then within a few years, I actually got a job. Um, I made the decision though, knowing that I was okay if I didn't go back into the classroom. I never wanted to leave yeah. and not be okay with not going back because you never know what's going to happen. You never know where this journey is going to take you. Yeah, no, that's good. And, and that's why we're such good friends is we have that same philosophy and outlook. And you've heard me talk about the impact yeah. before, like it's never about a status or a position. It's about the impact. And my really? journey was similar to yours. Like I never wanted to have the name plate on my desk that said principal. I no. just wanted to make a bigger impact on kids. And naturally it happened by taking lead positions around the school and, you know, presenting and just kind of stepping up where there was a need, not necessarily stepping up because I wanted to go somewhere in, in the status. Um, Absolutely. And I think that's so important for aspiring administrators to hear and hear from young people like us that have been in these positions that like, don't chase the position, chase the impact. And Absolutely. doors will open. Genuine doors will open too. Uh, when you're forcing doors to open, a lot of times they're not the right ones. So. Absolutely. And the right doors will open because, you know, you don't want to just have a title because it's at a school where you're an assistant principal or a principal or a dean. Like, that's fantastic. But you have to be happy where you work and the people that you're surrounding yourself with. Yeah. Right. 
or your life's going to be miserable and probably yes. everybody else around you too. So no, that's good. Um, so what kind of leader would you say you are? I have an idea, but I want to hear it from you. So I would say that I am a teacher leader. I always make sure that my teachers are at the forefront of every conversation I'm having and always in the forefront of my mind. And the kids are always put first as well. Yeah. Um, when I think about it and put it into like, uh, terms, I would say I am a player's coach, not a league coach. Yeah. I want to make sure that I am there supporting those people who have their boots on the ground and I'm going to be standing right alongside with them each and every day. Yeah. We're going to talk more about that here in a few minutes on their open floor, because I want to hear, you know, some of your, your strategies with that, because I think when you do that, right, then you're going to, your school, your building, your organization is going to go farther than you can ever imagine. So um, while we're on the topic of leadership, uh, I want to hear, because I think aspiring principals need to hear this as well, what it's really like in those trenches. Just give us a day in the life of you. Oh man, that's a hard question. Yeah. Um, each and every day really is such a different journey. I will say, I always tell people, I feel like I live 10 days in one. Sometimes I cannot believe that yeah. by the time I get to 2.15, what I've done in one day. Um, but my days always consist of being in classrooms, being surrounded by, you know, all these great educators and seeing all of the kids. Mm -hmm. I try and take a different grade level for math and a different grade level for reading each week so I can really make an impact in those specific content areas. Um, putting out a lot of fires each and every day. I am dealing with behaviors, phone calls, <laughs> who needs to go take a little break around the school. I'm also sitting in CLTs or our collaborative learning team meetings each day. And then I am also helping with our, we have a big PBIS, MTSS, um, RTI system here at our mm -hmm. school. And I'm the one who's in charge of leading all of that. So okay. that is a large portion of my that's day awesome. as well. That's, that's why it feels like May right now for you. And it's only yeah. the beginning of February. Um, yeah. It's real. I mean, and it is a job that it takes tough skin. It takes a lot of patience uh, and it takes a large mental capacity. And yeah. I try to explain that to aspiring principals and they're like, what are you talking about? And like the amount of decisions that you make in a day that impact people in their lives is astonishing. And yeah. I really didn't, didn't see that until I stepped out of it. And now that I'm in my role here with School of Life, like I remember when I first started, I was just like, I felt like I had all this time to, to do things, creative things. And I, in the evenings, I was able to sit down and play with my kids and not be like distracted or just wore out mentally. Um, and I realized why that was the case for so long when I was a school principal. Um, and so it, again, though, it's one of the best jobs ever because you get to make Absolutely. the greatest impact um, that you possibly can. And if you're doing it right, like kids are going to remember you for a lifetime. And Absolutely. that's such a special feeling. So um, well, keep, yeah, too, I was going to say it's important too, because where we are, who they see when they walk into the building every day, we are who they see walking around the halls. And I always never wanted to be the leader where they saw me and they would get scared and run yeah. the other way. I wanted to be the leader where they run up to me and hug me. Um, I actually, it was so sweet. This little kindergartner today, um, he's been having a rough go at it the past few yeah. weeks. And he ran up to me today in the hallway. He said, Miss P, I just love you. I'm so glad to see oh. you. And it just melted yeah. my heart. And I was like, it's paying off the work, yeah. the work hard, but it's important work and I'm making that lasting impact. Yeah. And definitely, I think when administration, like you don't see it in, day in and day out, like your wins, but you see those glimpses of wins, you know, periodically. And when that kid comes back in three years and says, thank you, or 10 yeah. years, maybe and says, thank you. And you get to see your harvest then is it's so rewarding. But yeah, I remember because I was with you, I was the principal that you're going to see me in a positive light. And you're yeah. going to see me everywhere. Right. I remember yeah. I had this one little guy and it kind of became a joke after a while. He'd be like, Mr. Braun, how many Mr. Bronze are there? Because <laughs> you're everywhere. <laughs> I saw you this morning at buses. I saw you in the cafeteria. I saw you in my gym class. I like, I was like, 
I, I would just use like uh, the Mr. Deeds line, you know, I'm very sneaky. <laughs> I'm yeah, everywhere. Well, so you never absolutely. know where you're going to find me. <laughs> and I might be watching you on the cameras when I'm not right here too. <laughs> oh, yes. I always tell them that. Hey, right there. You can see I'm watching. Yeah. So um, next question here. Love this question that I ask every episode. But who has influenced you either in your personal life, professional life, both? You can answer that however you'd like. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do one for each. Is that okay? Absolutely. So in my personal life, I would say definitely my grandma. My grandma is a wonderful, beautiful human who has really helped foster my confidence in myself. I, I'm not a shy and meek person on the outside, but on the inside, I can kind of feel that way. And she's always encouraged me to just be myself. She tells me I'm funny. I'm beautiful. <laughs> I am the best. She sends me text every morning. I love you. You're the best, most beautiful granddaughter ever. So those things are so little, but they're so impactful for me. And I'm 32 now and she still does it. So I cannot ever thank her enough for the lasting impact that she's had. Everyone, on. everyone needs somebody like that in their life, you know, just oh yeah, in their corner, lifting them up. So, oh yeah. So I would definitely say her in my personal life. And then in my professional life, I would say my first second and third grade teachers, those women that were there with me through those yeah. really tough times. Um, I can never thank them enough for what they did for me. My first grade teacher was just such a bright shining light to me and she knew me before and after. And I actually had the honor of working with her at oh. the school that I'm currently at for the past five years. And being able to work with someone who helped foster me when I was a little girl and I couldn't read anything. She would cry every time oh. I would get up and present in front of the staff. And she was always so proud of me. Yeah. Um, just the text that she'll send me every once in a blue moon, they, they really do have that lasting impact. So I would say definitely those, those teachers for me. Yeah, no, that's cool. And I was thinking that when you were talking, like, if I had her on and said, like, tell us about Nikki, I'm sure she would go on and on just how proud she is of you and see how far you've come both personally and professionally and where you're at now. So cool. Thank you for sharing that. Um, the next question, what has been a game changer or a hack for your school life? For me, the cameras were a big one. I could watch a kid <laughs> that I knew was a little squirrely or maybe that wanted to venture around the hallways. I could watch him from my phone or computer and see where he was at. But how about you? Um, so I would say the number one thing for me would be streamlining. So when I came into this role, there were a lot of systems and protocols and procedures that were being followed, but they weren't being followed with fidelity and okay. they weren't being followed well by all members of our school community because they were confusing. I was confused when I was a teacher here and I couldn't figure it all out. So the number one hack I would say as a leader, just streamline everything to make it as easy for them as possible. I love that because um, I have seen and witness this, I'm actually doing some cons consult work right now for a district that has some amazing initiatives. They have too many amazing initiatives that are just kind of falling and then none of them are working well, right? So I'm like, okay, we yeah. need to streamline these because like four of them actually could go in this one channel and yes. it worked really, really well. So just that science of implement implementation can go a long way. The fidelity is a big thing too. Like if we're going to do it, we're going to do this right. Um, and we're going to see it through because it could have a big impact. And if it doesn't, then we need to look at the, what's the next thing or what went wrong. And so uh, great. All right. We're going to open it up. This is the open floor. So you talked already a little bit about this, that you are a teacher first kind of leader, um, mm -hmm. which we need more of in our education system today. We need more leaders like you. And so, Share with us um, some examples, what this looks like for you um, at your school and what advice you would give, you know, to leaders that may be struggling with this, because for some people it comes really naturally, right? For mm -hmm. others, they have to work at it. And so um, the floor is yours. Let's talk about it. Absolutely. So I think first and foremost, I always 
anytime I sit in a meeting where I'm not with a group of teachers that are serving in our community, I always want to make sure that I have their voices in the back of my head. So if they were sitting here alongside of me, would this be something they would be able to take onto their plate? Their plates are so full. I never want to be putting that one thing is that that's going to help topple it over. So for example, we started a new math intervention program this year here at my school, and it was a really big undertaking. I think that it's going to be really impactful, Mm -hmm. but there's also a lot of prep and work that goes with it. And I couldn't allow my teachers to be able to spend all those extra time when they already have the curriculum for that the grade level that they have to teach. So we made an entire library of all of the materials for this math intervention to just take it off their plate for them. So now they come, they check everything out that they need, even the little pieces to do the math games, and they take it back to their classroom and it's one less thing on their plate. Or um, we also have a reading um, SOL, which is our standardized of learning test that we give at the end of the year. And myself, along with our two reading specialists last year, we planned the entire unit out so they don't have to worry about it. You guys worry about getting through your curriculum. I got the review for you. And this is everything from daily lessons to independent playlists to even the weekly quizzes, formative wow. assessments. So I really love you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hope so. I love them. So no, that's great. I, you know, that just, it goes so far, right? When teachers know that you have like their best self right here in the front of your, your brain, right? Not back here. Uh, And I would always talk about that as a principal. Like I am looking to see what we can take off your plate before we add on to your plate. Absolutely. Similar to what you just talked about before, like, that streamline every school in america right now has things that they put on their teachers that have like zero reasoning behind it it's because we've this is the way we've always done it mentality um and you look at it and you're like why are you asking teachers to do this well this we've just always done it that way or or you know we need the data and it's like okay then what are you doing with the data yeah (laughs) well you know we put it up and, and no why are you spending hours, you know, a month doing these things when it's not being used with fidelity or there's really just no rhyme or reason behind it. And so that goes a long way with teachers because either a, it allows them to pour more time into their lessons and prepare more engaging in lessons. It allows them to build more relationships with their students or B it allows them to spend more time at home. Right where they need to be or turn that teaching brain off for a little bit. And so um, it's a win-win situation. Absolutely. And that, you know, we always tell our teachers here that we want them to have really good core first instruction, that if they have this great intervention and they don't have that great core to go along with it, it's not going to be as powerful. So for me, if I can take that off your plate and that's one less thing and you can really focus on that core, I will do that for you. 100%. See that. We see, I see it all the time. Schools that try to tier three their way out of a tier one problem. Right. Yeah. The core instruction is not strong enough. So no. it looks like we have a lot of students in need where the reality is uh, we just got to improve our instruction at the basic yeah. level. Um, and these kids are going to be just fine. So Absolutely. Talk that's good. About it. Yeah. Anything else you're doing for your teachers that you, you need to share? I know people are writing things down right now because uh, what you said already is amazing. Oh, well, I, I also love to do. Um, like on Friday, every single week, I have little postcards. So at our school, we send postcards to our students, but I like to send postcards to our staff. So I just put them in their mailboxes or I tape them to their door. But every Friday, I make sure that I do two to four postcards and just thank a teacher for something I've seen them do throughout the week. And something that really left an impact on myself and or the impact I saw it left on a student or even a parent, I got a positive phone call from. And I really, it's so cute when I go into the classrooms now, I see a lot of them still have them taped on their door or on their bulletin boards. And I know it's important to them. And I, it fills my bucket being able to do that. So I can only imagine what it's doing for them. Yeah, absolutely. This is a thankless profession. Um, And 
teachers, educators need to hear that. And so when they can hear it from people like you, that's in, I want to say a position of power, but right, a position mm -hmm. of, of authority, then to know that, hey, one, you, you noticed it, you saw it, and two, you're going to take your time to, to recognize it is really powerful. So yeah, that is one of the things I'm working on now is, you know, yeah. we're the brag tag company of School of Life is, yes. I'm working with a few districts to uh, design brag tags for their staff. Like, let's recognize these people that are going above and beyond uh, and maybe simple, but let's just let them know that, hey, you're doing a great job. And this is what we're looking for as a district, love as a building. And so it's been fun to, to, to work with uh, some districts and design these tags for their teachers and staff and let, just give them some recognition that they deserve. So. Absolutely. And it's so important because they're the ones that are serving these kids every day. They're yeah. with them for those seven, seven and a half hours. And it's so important for them to feel valued as well. So if there's one, you know, 15 minute part of my day that I can write them a little note and give them a little pep in their step for the yeah. rest of the week, I, I love to do that. Um, I also wanted to mention, so our staff lounge was our um, meeting place for so many years we, and I think you and I presented together last year, okay. right? At the early yeah. nationals. And I remember this being part of our coaching your culture session. So yeah, talk about it. Yeah. So it was the Island of Misfit Toys in there. I mean, <laughs> our table literally went like this. Oh, yeah. We couldn't sit in the middle of it. We didn't have working microwaves, like one worked, one didn't. And it just, it was sad. You would go in there and it was not a happy place joyous place to be. So I spent a lot of time over the summer and we got a little team together and we painted it. A fresh coat of paint can make a whole place change. We also worked with some local businesses and our PTA to get some new furniture in there. Um, my mom works for a great company that was actually redoing their offices at the time in their conference yeah. rooms. So we gladly took the chairs that they were going to put in the trash yeah. and took them all over to the school. <laughs> and that was a project two years ago. And then this past summer, um, we noticed the same thing with our meeting room mm -hmm. because we're having meetings in there and we're doing really important work in there. And we wanted it to be powerful and we want it to be a, a place for us to be joyful, but also do that hard work. So yeah. we, every month I order snacks with our PTA and I made sure that it's colorful. I put pictures of us and I want to make it comfortable for everybody. Yeah. I love that. And it's just that collaborative, you know, space that says, you know, this is us, this is who we are and, and we're going to do great work in there. And so um, your office is that, that way I can tell, but you know, in the background <laughs> and my office at my school was the same way. And I've tried to create my office here at home. Uh, very similar because if I want to do passionate work that with that's going to make an impact, I got to feel that right in the in the presence, and so uh, it, it can go a long way. Like you said, a coat of paint can go a long way. So oh yeah, and well, I love a little organization too. Like oh, yeah. if everything has to have a home, I always tell the teachers here <laughs> that if you need something with a label, I would love to come in there and do it for you. <laughs> I'll bring my label maker. <laughs> I will bring every laminating pouch. I have two laminators. I have a paper slicer. I will be there. That's awesome. Love it. Well, thank you for that advice. And and seriously, if people have questions, reach out to you because yeah. um, this is impactful work. And like I said before, our education need, system needs more teacher leaders, teacher first leaders. Um, all right. We're going to wrap up with two things. I always ask. I love these two. Um, what advice do you give to educators who are either entering um, this crazy world of education or maybe they're 25 year old vets? Um, what advice are you going to give to educators? I would say that the most important thing is you need to laugh a lot. You need to find your joy in every day. This is really hard work we're doing. It's really heavy work. There are a lot of things that we go through each day that when you think about it and you reflect, you're like, 
oh my goodness, I can't believe that that occurred today. But there is good and there is joy in every single day. So I always tell people, make sure that you remember those things and you can't make the negativity outweigh it. And if it starts to do that, then we need to take a step back and make some adjustments to make sure that we are still finding that joy in each and every day. I love that. Yeah. And and that's important is seeing it, realizing that joy is gone and what adjustments do we need to make? Yeah. It absolutely. could just be a change of scenery, a change of grade level. Um, so absolutely. And then, uh, what advice do you give your students? I always tell them that they're here and their job is to be the best them that they can be. Mm-hmm. And I want them to put forth their best effort and we're going to make mistakes along the way, but we're going to learn from those mistakes and we're going to grow from them. And by the time you leave here, I want to make sure that you have the best six years in elementary school that you could have had. Yeah. I love that. Well, that. And a lot of kids don't have that at home maybe, and they just don't get, don't see that. Um, and so hearing it from someone like you that says, Hey, we're just going to try our hardest every day, right? One foot in front of the other. Um, it goes a long way. So seriously, Nikki, we're right at 30 minutes. We like, we timed this out. This was great. Um, so perfect. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. I'm not gonna lie. Cause you and I can talk. Um, luckily we talked we for 30 can. minutes before we started recording. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, you and I can talk. That's for sure. But we stayed right there at our time. So, Let's Hey, thank you. Fast. Yeah, we are. That is true. <laughs> seriously. Thank you uh, so much for all you do for education. Thank you for just being a positive light for so many kids in your school building um, and for those teachers that are working with you as well. Um, So anything else you want to share? No, I just can't thank you enough for having me. And um, thank you for thinking of me. I just adore you. So I was happy to be able to come and serve another community. There we go. I appreciate it a lot. (laughs) So as always, shout out School Life for sponsoring. Thank you very much. And to all of our listeners, we will see you next time. But until then, be great today.